So it's the last week in March, it's the end of the female season, and I've been joined by uh, Frederick Hanna from Blaser in the UK. Uh, he's going to come out with us on a muntjac hunt. Um, so we come straight down the range, and we're going to check zero with the new um, Silverstone R8, isn't it? Exactly. New R8 Ultimate Silverstone. Um, in addition to check zero today, I've brought the new fifth leg for our carbon shooting sticks to make it super stable, and it's um, the exact perfect thing to have along and I think a massive, massive help for zeroing and actually on a day like this where it's raining, you don't have to lie down on the yeah, background. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> English people don't mind laying down and getting wet, but oh, obviously right. the Germans would It's always the Germans' fault. If you, haven't, if you haven't heard yet, it's kind of the motto of the day, it's always the Germans' fault. <laughs> <laughs> cool, right, load up and we'll have a go. Right, that looks okay, Frederick, just one shot. And um, yeah, touch the right of that white circle, but we're not going to complain about that. Saving the shoulders for yeah, you. Yeah. Saving the shoulders. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I wouldn't want to stand in front of it anyway. No, it's so fine. That's good. Let's good. do it again. Yeah, let's go hunting. Let's go. Sporting wise or stalking wise, the, the UK is so versatile and there's so much. I mean, deer numbers over here in comparison to back home are so much higher and there's so much more going on. So mm. I think hunting wise, it's it's heaven really. Yeah. Well, we're going to head in this wood here on the right hand side. We're under a lot of pressure just to keep, you know, on top of the numbers. So for us, it's really a, a case of shooting, you know, pretty much any doe we see, mm. unless it's got like what we think is an obviously dependent kid with it. Um, we'll shoot yearling bucks. So we basically say to people anything with a sort of couple of centimetres of antler is fine, but anything bigger, we'll leave it to grow on. Yeah. So we do try and let a few of the bucks come on because we obviously sell them as, as trophy animals to clients. Um, but yeah, we, we can't do as much sort of, you know, saving individuals as you'd probably like to because of the number of muntjac we've got. Understood. Um, but yeah, we'll see what we see. Perfect, looking forward to it. So you, we have got this big block of rhododendrons in here. Okay. And so that's like Munchak heaven. Yeah, of course. And they're just coming in and out of that all the time. So we'll start going through here and then come back round as we go. Yeah, go in. So we just started in the wood here. Got like a block of rhododendrons in front of us and on the left hand side. And uh, Frederick saw one moving to the right, but unfortunately it's either winded us or spotted us. Yeah, I think it was the wind there, the wind. Yeah, it's not great here, but yeah. we'll keep going down, keep these rhododendrons on the left hand side, and then we'll circle back round so later on we'll have the wind. We'll have the wind in our face, yeah, yeah. spot on. see them just stood in the edge there you can see where that browse line is through there yeah. they just stand there looking out at you. like in the in the yeah. dark spots as well yeah but, uh, do you do a lot of stalking on foot at home um at home more and more actually what's super exciting where we kind of started stalking at home is boar in the wheat fields in the summer right because when the wind's in your face and you've got quite a strong wind they don't hear you because they're chewing so loud. Right. And it's you, you get within two, three yards of them. Right. It's amazing fun. <laughs> and then of course Robux. Yeah, yeah. Calling Robux in the summer. Yeah. Must be stalking. Yeah. But what's the Robux season in Germany? Um, it's actually just changed. Um, from it used to be the first of May we, we opened and now it's the first of April. Right. And then we end at the thirty first of October. Okay. Yeah, so same as us then basically. See where they've been going through here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's got a lot of activity. There's quite a thick area in there. We've got those sort of rushy, reedy bits. Yeah. So, um, and then what? further through there, we've got some horse fields and stuff. So you're a bit limited on what you can yeah. shoot that direction. Yeah. What's your experience with muntjac and water? Do they like like swampy areas, or um, do they prefer the dry, higher ground? I think they prefer the dry, higher yeah. ground. Like Chinese water deer are quite happy in like the swampy, yeah, yeah, boggy that's, bits. That's what I'm asking. Yeah, muntjac. They just they don't want to sit around in it, but they'll obviously like move through it. Um, when I was down in the Chilterns, 
um, before we moved up here. Yeah. We used to see like muntjacks swimming across the Thames and stuff, so they obviously right. like will do water. Wow. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's their favourite thing. One or two just sat in here by these yeah, of course. fallen yeah. trees somewhere. I don't, we've never really needed to. Okay. Um, and I think what tends to happen is you always call up the does because they think it's a, like it's a, a kid that's calling yeah. them. Yeah. So like best practice is not to shoot a doe if you call it up. Yeah. Um, or you call up the, you know, the young stupid bucks. It's the same as calling Robux, you know, you know there's a big buck there, but the chances of actually calling it are pretty slim and all you get is the young stupid ones. So. Uh, no, I get that. I mean. I, I really like the idea because I'm absolutely crazy about calling Robux. Mm. But in all these years now that I've been over here, I've only ever called one good muntrack again. Yeah. And yeah. otherwise, like you say, it's always the yearlings and, and the does coming in. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's always worth a go. I think if you, I tend to find it works more if you see one and you're trying to call it into a position where you can get a shot. Where you can it. get it to move it. Um, but the other problem is the same with the Robux again, is you, if you do get one that comes to the call successfully, they usually come like charging in and then they just stood there front on and what are you going to do with it, you know. Um, but we'll keep pressing on, we'll go and have a look around this other side of these rhododendrons. Yeah, the wind's There's good like now, some so. open pine trees in there, so I'm sure we'll see some I mean, the, the tracks going out are quite significant. So that, yeah, that yeah, I mean we've yeah. stalked in through here on like a red track yeah. where they've sort of crossed through, but um, yeah, we'll keep trying. <laughs> It's like a young doe um, up uh, this avenue of rhododendrons, but they're right on the skyline and we've got the road in the distance. So I sort of thought if we'd have come straight down the avenue rather than going around the back, we might have got a chance on those. But we'll keep heading through here, maybe find something on the other side here. Stand the sticks a minute. Good, well done. Young Munt Jack. Young little doe. Yeah, but they all count. For you guys, um, there was so much cover it was moving in and out of, there wasn't really time to, to get the cameras on it properly, so I don't know if you'd have seen any of that. Um, but it's funny, we've come in here and not seen very much at all in the last 10 minutes they've just started moving around a little bit and there was muntrick honestly everywhere wasn't yeah there? yeah so we'll, um, we'll 
keep going and see if we can find another one. Oh, nice one. Right. So how old's um, Blaser as a company? Because obviously they've got the other companies, Mauser and Sauer. So is, is Blaser kind of, the youngest one? No, Blaser's the oldest one. Oh, is it? So it's actually the, the whole history of Horst Blaser, right. our, our main kind of inventor and the, the name behind the company. Yeah. He started everything and then there was multiple owners. Uh, in the end, the current owner bought it and he is very, very commercial, very good at it, runs different businesses mm -hmm. and he's really made it to what it is and then bought Sauer, bought Mauser, bought Minox, bought Limpgenau, the, the thermal yeah, yeah. brand as well. Yeah. So he's really made it to, mm -hmm. to what it is. Yeah. yeah. So the, I mean, they were producing guns a long time ago then before they were bringing out straight pulls and stuff. Absolutely, like the straight pull, the, the R93, that was 1993. Yeah. yeah. And that's when Gerd Blank, the, the then owner, invented the, the straight pull, so to say, right. and made the first R93 rifle. And then the R8 came in 2008. That's yeah. kind of the invention year. The, the first production year. Right. And so yeah. you got like you got like the K95, yep. which is the brake barrel one obviously. Single shot yeah. brake barrel, yeah. But do they make sort of other conventional bolt rifles or is it just the straight pulls now? Yeah. On the blazer it's on the bolt action rifle it's the straight pull. Yeah. But then we still make uh, drilling and Bockbrook Slinton, which right. are like the combined shotgun barrel and rifle barrel guns, yeah. very traditional back home. Yeah, yeah. Um, but even at home now that is decreasing right. because people want the, the bolt action rifles yeah. for the driven bore shooting mainly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there we go. Anyway, we'll keep going up through here for a bit. Okay, so, we've just come out on this field, but they've obviously uh, sown it with vegetables already. Um, so it's just a brown field at the moment, so obviously not much chance of anything coming out here. But just look down the bottom here, we've got a big rough field with gorse bushes dotted around in it. Um, there's actually some sheep out there as well, which the deer don't tend to like very much, but I can see in the far distance there's a muntjac out. So we'll just go down the edge here, have a closer look, see if it's worth going across that field to it. Let's do it. Look right down the field there. Yeah, you can see it with my naked eye now, yeah. actually. The right hand edge of that last tree. Mm. Big body. Yeah. The wind's going straight to it, but I think it's so Can't open. get around it, do you think? Yeah, we'll just go down and see what it looks like. So we've come down to the field edge here, um, and the muntjac we saw is kind of just the left-hand side of these telegraph poles. Um, it's gone down into a little dip, because I think that's where the river runs along the back of this field. Um, the wind's pretty much going straight towards it, so what we're going to do is hop over the fence here, cut out to our right as we're walking along, try and at least not wind it straight away and then we'll come up behind a little gorse bush and then have a look um, hopefully the sheep won't spook and obviously spook it Take on it we'll give it a go we've got plenty of time Thank you very much. Good, good stock there, eh? Yeah, it was nice stock. Yeah, it was good, great fun. Yeah, I mean, we've, you know, come a good few hundred meters just in this little dip here. Um, hopefully, you guys saw that one on camera. But there's a little uh, dip down at the bottom here where it runs into the river, and there's some quite thick reeds. And the doe was just moving around in there, and I lost sight of it. So I got Frederick on the sticks uh, in case it literally came up the bank towards us, and then it popped out just a little popped bit further out just to the out right. Of the reeds, eh? Just yeah. out of nowhere. It's great. Every time, it's so fascinating with Munchak. I find how they are there one second, yeah, gone yeah. the other, and then all of a sudden there again. Eh? Yeah, they just disappear into nothing. You know, it's amazing. Um, Thank good. you so much. Really, really appreciate it. No problem. And you got to fly past by the American jets. Look at that. So, uh, <laughs> right, we'll right, go and have a look. Have a look. Cool. That's a big old day. Look at that. A yeah. couple of meals there. Yeah, good. Right, brilliant. Well, we'll get that carted back to the other side and then we can pick it up with the truck and um, yeah just grateful it's not a red deer we've got a cart all the way back no but there. it's always that way it's never the small one far away it's always <laughs> the big one far yeah, away exactly. <laughs> yeah, so will you grab the front legs I'll grab the front the back yep got it thank you 
take it, but it's good to take. Well done, good shot. Yeah, so nice one. It's a probably late middle aged buck there. Um, it's obviously got one antler shorter than the other, and that's probably always going to carry on like that. So good one to take out, really. I don't think he's going to get a lot better. Um, Easy. And quite a bit of thickness at the bottoms as well. Yeah. What are yeah. your like main things you look at to age Munchak? Is it pedicle height? Is it body? Is it the neck? What What are the like key indicators yeah. you look for? I mean, it's still with all the deer. It's um, it's like general body size, shape, yeah. the size of the neck. Obviously, the pedicles do get shorter as they get older, um, but it's not always the case that that's an exact. It's not always, know. though. I've no, seen some. Some of them will have yeah. short pedicles. Yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously, this one's got a, a busted off tusk on this side sort of rounded down blunt as well and also if you just generally feel the condition of it it's got a bit of a, he's a, raise, good nick, is he? a razor back on it so yeah I mean I think he's probably past his best and good one to take so amazing end to an amazing day isn't it yeah three deer down we'll get them picked up and sorted out of the larder can't wait <laughs>